Hey everybody, good to see you. Welcome again to back to Revive School and Luke chapter nine. For those of you who don't know, my name's Gordy Hinky. I'm from Indiana, enough. Um, what we wanna do is get busy in the word today. And if you watched the Luke eight video uh, that Kyle did, you're gonna understand that he was talking about some things that sometimes are pretty deep subjects for those of us who have been around the church, but maybe uh, on the fringe of some of these things called demons. And uh, so anyway, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, some of that in this, but before I do, I, I have to say that being with this painting has just enlightened me because we're looking at in the book of Luke, the study of the son of man from that standpoint. And, and what I love about this painting is you, you don't focus on anything here except the hands. And it's the hands that really are doing the work. And, and as the son of man, and we're going to study this in Luke chapter nine, we're going to see how in a real sense, the ministry is being handed off and we're coming out of who we are into who he wants us to become. And we become, in a sense, the body of Christ, the hands and feet of Jesus. And so this fascinating, I mean, fascinating tablecloth robe. What you're wondering is what face is right here? Well, there isn't, there's a flower pot. You, you look at this and you're going, how does this even work? That's the question of the kingdom. How does this work? How do we as sons of men become the sons of God? And now the, the power and spirit of God flows through us. And we're going, how is this possible? Let's talk about this. We're going to go right to Luke chapter nine, verse one. And uh, we're going to even write a few things down, which all of this is still fairly new, guys. So just walk with us. But um, as we walk through this, I want you just to do as much as you can to stay with the topics. All right. Uh, it says this and in the wonderful King James, it says this, then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Very, very important verse. We're going to talk about it. And then it says, and he said unto them, take nothing, take nothing for your journey, neither staves nor script, nor your, neither bread, neither money. D don't, uh, don't even have two coats. Don't even have the change of clothes, so to speak. And whatsoever house you enter into there, stay there, abide. And then leave, depart. And whosoever will not receive you when you go out of that city, shake off the very dust from your feet for a testimony against them. Let's stop there for a moment. Here's what I want to talk about to, to, to begin with. We just came out of Luke chapter eight, and not only did he deal with Legion, he had uh, an encounter with Jairus and the daughter that was sick and then died and not so much. And also in there was the woman with the issue of blood that was healed. And, and you look at this, and so here in Luke chapter eight, you have the backdrop of Jesus to the disciples being the son of God and bringing the kingdom in the midst of them. He's showing them, you can encounter demons, you're going to be okay. You can have somebody say they're sick and then you find out they're dead and then you find out they're not. And this is all good. Even when he was mocked about it, then you find out that somebody comes up and has an issue of blood and they're just go, who touched me? And all this kind of stuff. These are things that you're going, how does this work? You know, in the school, revive school, all of us, though, I don't care if we're teaching in the school, we're in school. 
We're trying to figure out the kingdom. We're trying to know its principles. We're trying to know its authority. We're trying to figure out day by day by day, how does this kingdom operate? Why? Because it's not natural to us. We have to learn it. We have to grow in it. We have to experience it. That's where we want to start today. So the first thing that I want to do today, and I'm going to use this awesome green marker. I'm going to write the word disciple. All righty. Because here's what happened. He called his 12 disciples together. Right? And then it says, and he gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. Here's what I believe happened there. And whether you want to go in this far down or not, it's okay with me. I, it doesn't matter. But I don't think that he went and, and just went, you have authority, you have authority, you have authority. I, I don't. Because you see, in our way of doing things, we want formula. I believe that what he did was he actually went to them and said, okay, guys, you just saw what I did. You just saw Legion. You just saw Jairus come to us. You just saw the women with the issue of blood. Now, what I'm telling you is, I'm not the only one that can do this. I want to show you how, and so this is now how to do it. Because you see, authority is something that you're going to believe that you possess, whether or not it feels like it. So in this process, here's what he did. He called his disciples and then he gave them power and authority over all the devils and to cure diseases. Now, some of you who know me, you know, we just can't leave it there. So power and authority, dunamis and exousia. Dunamis is that, that supernatural working of power that is beyond yourself and you don't know exactly how it works. All you know, all you know is he said you could and we believe it and you watch things happen and you're going, God, you're amazing. And he goes, I, I know that, but I want to work through you. And then authority is another whole realm of understanding. And I believe that many of us trip over authority, exousia, and we don't understand the fullness of it. And so when he says, and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases, we have to pay attention to that. So here's what I want to make sure you understand. He called his 12 disciples together. Disciples is the word mathetes. It just means student. We love the idea of sitting at Jesus' feet and being taught. We, we would really take, you know, I, and I have to imagine this. Please understand me and understand I also talk with my hands. Um, we have to understand that we who are sons of God by faith, we sit at Jesus' feet in a different way. Wouldn't it be great if Jesus walked the earth for all of us and we got to just position ourselves at his feet and say, okay, he said, do this. We, we're we're going to go do this. What we have is his word and his spirit, which causes us to become the sons of God by faith. We have to believe it, even though we can't see it. And so sometimes we let our feelings be our believing instead of the word of God being our authority in who we are. And so when it talks about this, I, I'm going to bring in three words here. A disciple. So here's what I believe a disciple has that is something that we have to get used to. It's citizenship. If you are going to be a disciple, then what you're going to become is you're working on your citizenship into a kingdom that is unseen, that has to be brought to you by the truth of God, but because you can't see it, you have to operate in the realm of faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's got substance. They just saw Luke chapter eight. It's the evidence of things not seen. They saw it. There's no taking that back. And now he sits them down and says, okay guys, I just demonstrated these things. Now, go. And don't take anything with you. Why? I, I just love this whole concept. Okay, guys, 
why would he say take nothing with you? Go ahead. Because you're gonna you're gonna fall back onto what you know. So if you take stuff with you, you're gonna count on that instead of faith in the unseen. I love it. You know what that does for me? When I take nothing with me, I disappear. I can't depend. I have to trust that my authority becomes the feet, the hands and feet of Jesus. And here we are going after the ministry of the kingdom with only the hands of the kingdom. When I, when I see what we're talking about here, so what I, I'm going to add one word down here, and this is teachability. Now, as disciples, honestly, please understand, I'm not saying that we don't love God in the ways that I'm going to portray this. Please understand this. So let's go on a little bit in, in understanding disciple, citizenship, teachability. I do agree that the discipleship needs, the disciple has to understand who he is. Identity is a huge thing. And so when we're working on citizenship, here's what I see, and I'm maybe going to point a little bit of finger at us who are the church, especially even leadership of church. Many people, they have been so far outside the parameter of discipleship that they can't even embrace the concept in many ways. Jesus is doing it in Luke chapter 9. Here's what I want to, to show you. A disciple recognizes that there's something I don't know, therefore I must take it in. I must learn what it is I don't know. Then when Jesus is saying, you guys operate in a, in a method and in a manner that is very natural, but I want to bring something to you that is supernatural. Why? Because it's of another kingdom. Jesus is the son of man, but that's one side of him. He's also the son of God. So the son of God has to invade the kingdom of man so that he can be the son of man and show them the kingdom of God. And so when you're looking at this concept, he's trying to get them to see that the, the unseen kingdom, the unseen face, it can be me or it can be you. It really doesn't matter the face. It only matters the touch because the kingdom of God brought into existence into the human world will only operate in the touch. When the kingdoms come into conflict, so to speak, and this is something that we were talking about in a Bible study this morning, even the angel coming into the tomb, uh, down to the you know, atmosphere of earth to move the stone, caused an earthquake in the earth. I believe that there is cataclysm at certain times when the kingdom of God invades the kingdom of earth and there is such a movement between the supernatural power of God and the natural power of man that there's things that happen in the midst of that. I love the Luke chapter 8 where, you know, Jesus just walks into the scene. And who speaks? Legion. Who are you, son of man, son of God, that you are come? You know, all this kind of stuff. And you're going, who asked? Threatened, are you? The whole idea of the intimidation that always works in the enemy can be intimidated when it's encountered by the true power of God. And that's what Jesus is teaching in authority in his disciples. So he says to them, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go and I want you to go in this authority and I want you to preach what you have seen. What is it? The kingdom of God. Okay, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. You can do this. And so as we're looking at what he's telling his disciples, he says, and no crutches. Don't take anything with you. Why? Because what I want you to... You'll concentrate on other things if you're not careful. You'll, you'll establish your own way of doing things if you're not careful. But when you take nothing with you, when you don't even have the personality to walk with it, now you're taking nothing of yourself and you'll depend on the supernatural. These are the kinds of things that I think have to be brought in. And you know what? You've been in school now for a little while. 
You've been listening, you've been reading, you've been following, you've been taking notes, and most of you, if not all of you, are now having revelation on the inside of you that you're going, this is incredible. I love what the Spirit of God does. Even some of you are walking into environments now where you can sense the power of God in a place and you can, re you can understand immediately there is a dearth in the power of God in this place. And yet what you're doing is you're learning how to walk in the Spirit at deeper levels and you're not having to walk in the natural understanding of where you're living. Now, let me go on a little bit. Here's a little bit of an example of what I want you to see that we're doing um, uh, as, as ambassadors. And this is something that I'm going to write up here on the board. If you notice, I put uh, a disciple and disciple uh, is something that um, always is learning. OK, but there is something else that is going to follow this, and that is. And I'm going to show you something in the scripture. There is a disciple and then there's the apostle. There is the citizenship and then there is ambassadorship. If I don't run out of room for the ship. And there's teachability and then there is responsibility. Here we are. Here's what I want to show you, okay? When Moses delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt, you all know that, you went through the Pentateuch, you paid attention, you got the whole story. It says this, that they went and they were going to go into a land flowing with milk and honey. And the truth is that because they sent spies in there and they didn't have the operation of faith, they still had captive mentality, they, the spies that came back said, we're not able to do what you said we could do. So what they did is they were confined to 40 more years of discipleship because if they didn't learn it, now they've got to go to the long-term school. You, you see how God always wanted them to go. He always wanted them in the promised land. But the idea that they couldn't grasp what he wanted them to become cost them tremendously. And in fact, the generation died of the people who could have gone in, but didn't. I'm not speaking prophetically, so to speak, but I'm telling you, there's part of the church that's dying today. Why? Because we haven't bothered to walk in the power and authority of God. We've just made it a, a discipleship and we haven't entered into this concept of ambassadorship from citizenship. We haven't learned how to walk in a, a, a more responsible matter instead of just a teachable matter. And we, and we really deny the power of God to work inside of us. We want Jesus face to be in the picture so we can just be the one that's always ministered to. And he said, that's never been the kingdom concept. I didn't come to be the son of God and the son of man. I came to be the son of God in clothes of the son of man to teach you that you can be also the sons of God as you are a son of man. That's the whole concept of kingdom understanding. It's a teaching concept. So here's what happened. It says that he gave them authority. Authority is the idea of taking citizens of a, of a kingdom and making them ambassadors of that kingdom into another kingdom. So when we become the children of light, we now become ambassadors of the kingdom of God into the kingdom of darkness. We, and if you understand ambassadorship, it's, a, it's an awesome thing because in a sense, we can set up embassies. What is that? That's a safe haven. That's what I believe God has ordained in the church, so to speak, that we have places where we gather, where there are places of refuge, places of, of refreshment, places of that. But it's not supposed to be a place where we live. You don't live in the embassy. You live in the kingdom. And when you live in the kingdom, there is something beautiful about an embassy. Now, we have the ability to be in another nation, but operate in the rule of our kingdomship. There are, there are limits to ambassadorship, and I can show you some of those. But I want you to understand the idea of when he sent them out. He sent them out saying, 
I give you power and authority over all the devils and to cure diseases. Does it mean they get it? Let me ask you this. There are two passages, Matthew chapter 17, verse 21, and Mark chapter 9, verse 29, that say the very same thing. This is when the disciples early in their ministry were sent out to cast out devils. And a man came to them and said, I have a son that is possessed. And I ask your disciples to cast him out, and they could not. Jesus talked to the man, and, and, and the disciples even came to him and said, why is it that we could not cast out this devil? He said, because this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Okay, now, please understand. If we are disciples of the kingdom, wanting to be ambassadors so that anywhere we go, we can bring in those who are asking for asylum, asking for freedom from the conflict of the kingdom that they're in, then in that context, we have the ability to, to, to take them and to move them into a place of freedom and safety. That's who we are as ambassadors. So in this case, we have to look at authority and say, okay, then there is a key principle here. Evidently, there is an authority given and an authority understood in depth in this kingdom experience that comes through prayer and fasting. Because if he gave them power and authority over all devils, and yet later on they come back and say, we couldn't do it, then what's he looking for? Here's what I love. Jesus said, whom do you say that I am? And Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Great. And he says, and I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Great. And then he says, but I give you the keys to the kingdom. I believe that the keys to the kingdom are things like this, that when we're learning authority in the kingdom, here's where we're operating. We're operating in a place to say, how do I further the authority that I walk in? Because I want to tell you, if you speak to demon and demon doesn't come out, you know immediately what other enemy spirits are going to say. Na, 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 na. You're not good enough. You're not qualified. And what do we have to go back to? He gave me all authority. I'm coming back. I'm going to figure it out, and I'm coming back. I'm going to get into prayer, and I'm going to get into fasting, and we're going to figure out where the authority line is. And I'm just telling you, you can say what you want. I'll be back. Famous last words. And um, anyway, when, when we look at this, here's what I want you to see, okay? And, and then also understand that in Matthew chapter 13, verse 58, Jesus was in his home country. And this is Jesus now, okay? And it says, in his home, in his home country, it says he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. There was not a cooperation with who he was as the son of God to become a son of man who could operate in power in that area. They only saw him as man, diminished his Godhead, and therefore he could not minister to them, not because he couldn't, but because they couldn't be ministered to. They wouldn't allow his hands to become the touch that they needed to be. Did he have authority? You bet he did. We always walk in authority if we understand it. But we have to understand the limitations of our authority. We have to understand the parameters of uh, what operation in the kingdom comes, like the prayer and fasting. And we also then have to have the confidence that my citizenship has elevated me into an ambassadorship that I have been appointed to. Here's what I want to show you. This is how uh, we've got just a few minutes. When we are in Luke chapter 9, let's go to verse 10. And the apostles, when they had returned, you are actually going to find the same exact concept 
in Matthew chapter 10 and in Mark chapter 6 that he calls them together as disciples, realizing he's their teacher. But when they walk away in his authority and they find out that they possess power and authority, their name changes and they go from citizenship con uh, contestants, so to speak, into ambassadorship as apostles. The apostle, the whole idea of, if you want to look it up, here's, here's the strong, my strong says this. Many times we talk about uh, apostles and the word is just ap apostolos uh, in Greek, but it says sent. But it also, if you're going to look at it, it says a delegate that is sent. You know what a delegate is? An ambassador. It is someone who doesn't operate in his own authority. He walks in the authority that has been given to him through the authority that he represents. And so when we graduate from citizenship to ambassadorship, we, we go from teachability into responsibility. But when we take up the responsibility, something happens inside of us. It changes the dynamic that we operate in because when my experience matches my authority and the understanding that I have, suddenly there's a boldness that comes up because now I understand I walk in authority. The disciples came back and it says, and the apostles, when they returned, told him all that they had done. In another place, it says this, and, and this is in another little bit of a context, but when they came back and they ran back to him and said, Jesus, even the demons are subject to us in, the, in your name. You know what he said? I beheld Satan fall like lightning. Don't get wrapped up that your face is in the picture. Just realize you're the hands of the kingdom. I saw Satan fall like lightning. But don't marvel that the demons are subject to you in my name. Marvel that your names are written down in the book of life or in the kingdom of heaven. This is the idea that mankind can now be included into this kingdom of God. And we now have a citizenship that causes us to become ambassadors. We go from teachability and a disciple who just wants to learn into an apostle and a responsibility of the kingdom. And this is why I love this ministry. I believe that there is a work that is turning eyes and minds open and, and eyes open in this place so that we go from where we... Church is what? Church is sitting in the pew and then getting up and then sitting down after three songs and getting up and sitting down when the preacher's preaching and getting up and walking out the door and going, yay, God. And he's going, what about yay, you? We have a responsibility. We are the hands and feet of Christ. And when we will take our citizenships clearly and seriously into our hearts, he says, I didn't call you to just be citizens. I called you to be ambassadors. I've called you. I've gathered you, if you go back and, and, and look at what Kyle said uh, in the teaching of Luke 8, come and go. That's where we come as disciples and go as apostles. You're not going to be the apostle of the church. That's, uh, that's a different thing. All of us, though, are sent as delegates into a kingdom that is darkness because we have become citizens of light. You have to infect and affect the darkness around you in order to do it. I trust that you can understand this whole idea of the disciple and the apostle, the citizenship and the ambassadorship, going from teachability will always be learning. But there is an experience that will enhance our learning when we take the responsibility of going into the kingdom and seeing darkness flee from us because we're the hands of Jesus. I trust this is something you've gotten and can take into your spirit. And that's all the time we have. See ya.